Good evening, everyone. Thank you once again for joining me on the Little Crafter Show. Hello, my name is Eileen, and Mr. Tim Hulse is in the house. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Yeah, I know Pam calls him Timmy, but um, I call him Mr. Hulse, which gets me in trouble. Not really. My husband just makes fun of me and goes, Mr. Hulse, hmm. Mr. Tim Hulse, huh? But um, in any case, um. Yeah, so, as you saw from my last haul video, which was in the car, and yes, I kind of stole the idea from Pocono Pam, because I'm sitting there, bored, want to look at my products, and, you know, hey, I got a iPhone, you can do pretty much anything with these things, so, that's why I videotape it, but, um, thanks Pam for sharing that idea, and, um, it's been really fun, I enjoyed myself, um, I'm not too crazy about the smell, but I do have to say that I find... A lot of different uses for the home goods stores and the um, like the Home Depot and the Harbor Freights, and even if I don't stay too long in the um, auto supply stores, I'll look at some stuff and you know look at it and say, hmm, what could I use this for? Or you know, so it's just something I do, but. <laughs> Um, but I've been having a lot more fun making the videos <laughs> as of late. So, in anywho, guys, um, I wanted to say that, um, the markers do come in five, like before, and they kind of are, um, this, this one is called Country Fair. They kind of have little names for them, and they come... And then this one is Victorian Shabby. And um, so I have, so far, I have Barn Door Red, Faded, Faded Jean. Spun sugar, no, this is all wrong, mustard seed, and broken china. For the project, what I use was um, peel paint. Sorry, I don't have them all. Vintage photo. Oh, excuse me. Antique linen. I apologize. And. Bundled sage. Of course, everybody knows what this is. White picket fence. And black soot. And we all know that this is the brush side, and this is the fine tip. This is what the fine tip looks like. And this is what the um, brush tip looks like. For the... white picket fence this is what it looks like and that's the and this is the um the fine tip for the for the white picket fence it's different um mr holtz does go in detail with his new video that he came out about the markers um, I did come across a video that I don't know if this information was available or the person didn't, I don't know what. Um, but this person has said, um, 
that you have to store the markers flat. You do not have to store them flat. You can store them upright because the container that it, when you buy the whole set, the container is tubular and or cylinder, um, and it has a hexagon um, shape to it on the top, which um, the hexagon is to stop it from rolling around. So, um, so that's just something that I learned that I wanted to share with you all. Um, so just, you know, just something to keep in mind. You do not have to start like this. It's also like this. Um, you know, we all have and need space in our craft room. So, um, so I think that's the reason why Mr. Holtz, um, did it that way. So. Mm. Sorry about that. I had a little gas. Um, Alright, so that is what the, um, my little PDA. <laughs> and I'm not knocking the person. Um, Like I said, I just, I don't know, like, um, I guess when the markers first came out, not a lot of information was given about how to store them. You know, I was intrigued and I was very curious. So, um, you know, I'm also glad that um, you know, we can do that both ways because it would be bothersome, you know, what if you can't store them this way? So, um, I'm glad that, um, you know, they took that in count in into account and, uh, did it that way. Okay, so moving right along. Um, so here is my first project. You can laugh all you want because I know it's messy, but, um. I just wanted to give it a first attempt. Um, I used a Kitty B designed stamps. Um, she's on Etsy and she has clear mounts, clear stamps, and she clear yeah clear stamps, and she also has um digital stamps. So she got digis too. And um, so here's my little doggy. I think this is a doggy. I'm not too sure if this is a doggy or the bear. Um, because it's kind of laying flat. You can't really tell. I, I think this is the doggy who I find so cute. I'm hoping that she comes up with more stamps for the, um, for the, for the, for the dog. <laughs> um, she has digital, but I don't have her printer. I'm going to have to remedy that soon. Well, they do have her printer, but I lost the plugs. Yeah. A long story. But in any who, um, <laughs> Antique linen was the first color that I used. Um, everything was moving along s pretty smoothly, in my opinion. For the grass, I used um, peel paint. And for this one, I used peel paint. Um, for the eyes and nose, I used um, black soot. And then, when it came to the mouth, I don't know what happened. The green, the sage, bundle sage. Ooh, say that ten times fast. Um, it came out too dark, so what I did was I used the white picket fence, and the paper started to fray a little bit. Um, this is Recollections, so basically, and this is what the back looks like. So, it started to get all like that, when you wet it, kind of a thing. So, um, I don't know if I should just use broader strokes. Just keep moving. I think I went over it one too many times. Um, that's probably what my downfall was. And um, just so that you can see, this is what the fine tip looks like. And this is what the um, brush looks like. For the, um, this color is the bundled sage. So yeah, so that's my first attempt. I haven't tried the watercolor first. Um... I'm still working on the um, the stamping of the coloring. You stamp, I mean, you color on it, and then you release hot breath and stamp. Um, I'm still working on that, and uh, I want to get my fine detailed um, brush before I start working on the coloring part of it. But um, so far, that is my project and my little PDA on the markers. Um, I'm hoping and praying that they come up with more, um, so that I can get some more. I really would like more colors, and um, 
So thank you for watching my video and um, have a great day. Bye for now.